Good morning. It's very early on a Monday morning, 4 a.m. Unfortunately, due to my work schedule, I now have to get up pretty early to get in a workout and a run. And this past week, I had something at work that was really on my mind, and I took my mind off of running for just a moment, and I fell. And I broke my favorite Zephyr Nathan Light. I repaired it, but by the time I repaired it, my workout and dive partner, Bill, had gone ahead and gotten something for me that he had been looking at for a long time that he has said was a prototype and finally was released and that is knuckle lights for running in the dark and I am going to try them out this morning so far I'm pretty impressed this is their little charger and they actually have a magnet that holds them together so that you can keep track of them I'm a little bit worried about the type of well, I guess it's the leash system, I guess you would say, or the the way that you hold them. We'll see how that goes, but I'm going to get in a workout and then go for a run and let you know once I use them how they are. I know that I've turned them on and they are really bright, <laughs> so I'm hoping that they're going to be great and the Nathan light still works. It's kind of a testament to how great this light is. I went down, I fell, and I mean, I... Took some, <laughs> took some plastic off of this thing. I mean, I really, it, it got really scratched up and I didn't. Uh, so, works great, still works, but just for grins, I'm now going to try the knuckle lights and see how they work. See you in a bit. I'm back from my run and the knuckle lights work great. I have a several, <laughs> several observations about them, so I'm going to go through those right now. The first difference that I noticed with these lights was that when I'm using my Zephyr Nathan light, you're supposed to hold it like this. But when I hold it like this, it actually shines up into the trees when I'm running. And so generally I readjust and I just kind of hold it very lightly like that. It doesn't bounce in my hand. Of course the light bounces up and down, but it doesn't bounce in my hand. and. I don't, um, my hand's not warm or anything. It's just a little bit of fabric touching here and there. And the other thing is that this whole episode is brought on because the other day I lost concentration while I was running and I fell and I fell on my hand and I have no abrasion on my hand because the light took the brunt of it. And you can see it's pretty chewed up right there. Um, my face got a little bit abraded and my knee got pretty darn bloody. So that is what spurred us looking at something else and actually Bill is the one who had been watching these knuckle lights while they were in production and while they were coming out and keeping an eye on those to see how they were going to work and so once they came out a prototype then he had a reason to get a set for me. This light, my Nathan Zephyr, I broke the bale that holds the velcro together here and so the whole thing seemed like it fell apart but then I used a piece of plastic and I just hot glued it in there and repaired the light but by the time I had repaired the light Bill had already invested in the knuckle lights for me and these arrived in the mail yesterday I think it was and kind of exciting they go through 800 charges they're good for 800 charges they're 280 lumens and they're waterproof they come with the most clever little docking station they just go like that when you're ready to charge them and they have a USB cable with a 90 degree turn on it. And the reason they're still on, even though I'm not running, is I want to check something. One of the things that I noticed when I was using them was that after the first mile, my hands actually started sweating and got hot. So I've got uh, one of these things from E-Tech City that measures heat, and I'm just gonna check and see how hot, oh. 96.4, 95, 83. I'm just kind of checking to see what what is the heat on this because I noticed that my hands got really hot and sweaty. And this would be the part back here that was touching me. 83.6, 88.7, 89.2. Oh, it's rising. Okay, so somewhere between 88 and 92 degrees of heat coming off of the back of the light. And I noticed after the first mile that my hands were, were pretty warm. So that was 
that was one thing that I think that's going to be wonderful in the winter. I am going to be so happy to be holding these lights. Another thing I noticed was just because of the way you hold these lights, it was a little bit harder to turn the music on on my cell phone. And let's see if I can show you. So they go in your hands like this. They do have a magnet between them that helps hold them together, which is great. So if you uh, need to switch them to one hand, you're not going to lose it. But I did have a little bit more trouble manipulating my cell phone, turning on my music and turning on Run Keeper. And I did try repositioning them. And boy, this is hard to do with one hand. <laughs> I tried repositioning them and holding them like, like this. But in that case, they bounced around too much. So I just had to hold them the way that it tells you in the manual that you should hold them. And what I found was that I was getting kind of sweaty after the first mile between my fingers and on the back side of my hand just because of being up next to that heat. But the amazing things about them, as you're running, you see the light doesn't bounce around. You see it moving some, but it's not really bouncing like it does with my spotlight. So that was really great because I was able to lengthen my stride because of being able to see the ground under me. With my other light, I just kind of got a glimpse of the ground every time I made a pass with the light. So I could check and see, is there a snake? Is there an armadillo? Is there anything like that? Another thing is my Nathan Zephyr light not only has a front light, but it has a back blinking light. And that can be seen for a half mile. And these do not have that ability. However, I'm running somewhere where there's just absolutely no traffic. There's one woman who comes through delivering newspapers in the morning at this time in the morning at five in the morning. So I, I don't have a lot of traffic. Um, I did notice that because these are a flood, I can't see as far. And at one point I saw some little beady eyeballs and it was a cat. And I figured it was a cat with the Nathan Zephyr light. I would have been able to put a spotlight right on the cat and see that it was a cat. And with these, I had to get pretty close before I knew that but that's okay there's not much out here and actually the main thing that's a worry for me is sometimes armadillos run out and they're kind of stocky and they don't see very well so they blunder about and with these lights I'll be able to see what's underfoot and about to trip me I've almost gone flying over armadillos in the past so that's gonna make it a lot easier because it's more of a flood I don't really need to see far in the distance so that part's going to be great. Okay, next thing is I want to check, and boy, you know, it's so early in the morning, the light's pretty bad. I've got this great scale from OXO. It lets you do tear weights where you can zero out. And I just want to compare what the difference in these is. Okay, this is four and an eighth ounce. And these together are five ounces so instead of carrying four ounces on one hand I'm carrying two and a half ounces on each hand so that's not that bad that's pretty good all in all I will tell you I am pretty thrilled with these knuckle lights they've got a way to contact the developer of them and I will probably give some feedback on those later on today they came with a nice user guide came with plenty of information an awful lot of packaging. I know we're all aware we don't want too much packaging. Nifty little charging device and 800 charges. That's going to last quite a long time. It does say that these type of batteries, these lithium, lithium batteries, do lose some power over time. And, well, that's, I guess, any, oops, any batteries. I noticed that they are pretty easy to turn on. These buttons stick way up, and I actually accidentally turned them on when I first left the house today, but they're very easy to operate. The Nathan Zephyr, also easy to operate once you learn that the bottom button is the squeaker and the top button, or the one closer to the end is the one that turns on the light. And the Nathan has a beam, a beam and a flash, brighter beam, strobe, I usually just use this one on the lower beam so that the battery would last a little bit longer and I'd get several weeks out of it. These knuckle lights also have several different modes. They have just a bright, not as bright, and a strobe. And if you hold them down for a couple seconds, they turn off. So that's my review so far. I've only used these one time. So far, I'm very pleased. I was a little bit 
a little bit perplexed when my hand started sweating at the one mile mark and then I realized, well, that was because I was holding <laughs> holding something hot in my hand. I uh, think they're a good value. I think they're gonna work pretty well. I think this will be pretty easy to wash and I'll let you know after a couple more runs how they do for me. I still love my Zephyr Light. This has been my three year companion for running in the dark. I still absolutely love it. It will probably now be just a dog walk light because it actually is the perfect angle when you have it on your wrist. It's the perfect angle for walking. It's never been exactly the best angle for running because it shoots up and I really light up the trees. I always had to hold it kind of funny. But now I've got both solutions, both are great. This was all that was on the market at that point. And now with the knuckle lights, wow, the floodlight is really bright and I can see where I'm going. I can lengthen my stride and I think it's gonna change up my morning runs. The only reason I run in the morning, I am not necessarily a morning person. I would rather get up at five or six in the morning. Getting up at four is pretty tough, but my work schedule changed and we got to work an hour later and I just don't have time to make a healthy dinner and work out and run in the evening and walk dogs. So I've switched to working out and running in the morning and I need a way to see where I'm going because it's really dark out in the morning. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe so that you get notice for the next one and check out the blog. There'll be some more reviews, uh, some codes for sunscreen, things of that nature. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.